Hi guys, my name is Tom and I'm the Tech Chap and welcome to my in-depth Samsung Galaxy S6 review. Now the Galaxy S5 was a great phone, but one of the biggest issues people had with it was it just didn't look that great, it wasn't much of a looker. So it's great to see that Samsung's finally listened and made real and significant improvements to the look and design of the S6. It really does look a lot nicer and also feels a lot more comfortable in the hand in any, every single way in my opinion this looks nicer than its predecessor now this has come at a cost unfortunately some say that it's a little reminiscent of the uh, apple iphone 6 in some ways whether you agree or not is up to you but one, one thing perhaps they have copied from samsung is this design ethos of form over function we've lost the water resistance the expandable memory and the removable battery of the s5 just for a sort of cosmetic improvement just for better looks. Now this is a bit of a divisive issue. Many will appreciate the much better looking phone, but others will miss the functionality of its predecessor. So uh, it's come at a cost, but overall it does look a lot nicer. But of course design is only one improvement on the S6. There's a vast array of other improvements and changes. Samsung's own Exynos processors, we've got three gigs of RAM, we've got a QHD screen, we've got fast charging, we've got wireless charging. There's a whole lot to this phone and uh, that I'm looking forward to showing you in the full review. So stick with me as we go hands on and uh, let me tell you why I think it's going to be one of the phones to beat for 2015. So one of the biggest changes we're seeing this year with the S6 is the overhaul of the design and it's a pretty big change and in my opinion a pretty big improvement over its predecessor the S5. This is a really really nice looking phone. It's not quite without its flaws but uh, the side bezels are thinner, It's uh, the home button is taller, the uh, whole back is completely redesigned with a nice glass finish. So it's small changes on the front, uh, pretty significant changes on the back. We've gone on the is the dotted textured look of the S5 and now we've got this Gorilla Glass 4 uh, back which is uh, very reminiscent of the Sony Z series which also features a glass back. But also Gorilla Glass 4 on the front so it's pretty uh, fairly well protected all around although we'll get into a bit later the fact that um, I have actually made a couple of sort of micro uh, scratches already so it's still a little fragile and I would still recommend putting a case on it because uh, the camera does protrude out the back quite significantly it's uh, not flush in the slightest so uh, to protect the uh, glass of the camera lens and also just because it's such a nice looking phone you might want to uh, protect it by putting a case on. Generally this is an extremely nice phone and I'm really impressed with the design. On the right we've got a single power button and a nano sim port and on the left we have the volume rockers, two separate uh, buttons here. Now it's worth noting that the power button is about two-thirds of the way up if we're going from the bottom on the right side which means it's nice, nicely positioned to be easily clickable either by your perhaps index button if you're left-handed or your thumb if you're right-handed and uh, we've got a single uh, speaker at the top but that's simply for the earpiece the earpiece uh, speaker but the actual speaker itself has been upgraded from which was on the S5 originally on the bottom right is upgraded now to a very iPhone-y sort of uh, bottom here although it does look similar to the iPhone 6 it's not quite exactly the same but uh, you know that it works well there so uh, why not here and it's a definite upgrade in performance and uh, whether that's due to the speaker being just improved or it's just a better placement of it. Next to that we have a, a micro USB 2 port so we're still not seeing micro USB 3 or 3.1 so it's still uh, not it's not reversible or anything but it does have quick charge technology it's, it's very similar to the Qualcomm quick charge tech but obviously this is uh, using Samsung's own processors so uh, it's not quite it's not Qualcomm but it does quick charge and it's uh, very impressive as well and we'll go into that later when we talk about the battery and next to that we have this standard three and a half millimeter jack for headphones on the top we've got a very small IR blaster which is uh, impressively small considering on the M9 from HTC it takes up pretty much the whole of the top surface and we've got a uh, noise cancelling mic. At the end of the day it's a really nice looking phone, it's a step up from the S5 and obviously we have lost some functionality uh, as, an up as a result of the sort of our cosmetic upgrade. For some it's not going to be worth it but for others this would be exactly why you want to buy the S6, it's really really nice. The only other major difference uh, to the design is that the uh, flash and the heart rate monitor has been moved from below the camera uh, up to the side of the camera, but um, that doesn't um, really mean anything or have any impact other than it just looks a bit different. So we've got a Samsung logo on the back, we've got a uh, Samsung logo on the top. This is in the midnight blue colour, which uh, I was, it was one of the three that uh, is being shipped at the moment when it came out, and I really, really like it. It's sort of 
almost a black, but it does have a, a, a bluey tint to it, which if I can find the light for you, you can see is a quite a premium, quite a classy looking uh, color and one I'd actually really highly recommend. Beyond that, on the front, we have a front facing five megapixel camera and on the uh, camera on the back is a 16 megapixel optical image stabilized camera, which is exceptional. I'm looking forward to showing you some of the photos I've taken with this later on. But as for the design, that's pretty much it. As I say, it's still got a 5.1 inch screen and uh, it's actually incredibly comfortable to hold as well. This is thanks to just how thin and light it is and also that the corners are nice and rounded. Weighing just 138 grams and being just 6.8 millimeters thick means that this is really nice, really comfortable, really lightweight device which fits really nicely in my hand. I get a good reach on the uh, for my fingers thanks to its uh, pretty compact uh, overall size. It's got a decent screen to body ratio of just over 70%. So that's pretty good. It's not class leading but it's uh, better than others and especially better than the iPhone for example. So overall design I'm really impressed with. I think it's a big step up from the S5. It is a little reminiscent of the uh, iPhone 6 and the front doesn't look that dissimilar from the S5 but overall as a, as a package it's much much nicer just from the comfort, the feel, the overall ergonomics. It's a really really nice phone and great to look at and my friends have commented that it's a really really cracking looking device. So let's move on to the display and as I say this is a 5.1 inch QHD display so that's 1440 by 2560 res affording it a ridiculous pixel density of 577 pixels per inch which I believe is one of the sharpest if not the sharpest you can possibly get on a phone and in my opinion probably a quite a, a way beyond what uh, you're likely to even notice in real life. It's reasonably common to see QHD displays on 5.5 inch plus phones such as the LG G3 or the Note 4 or the G4, the upcoming G4, but at 5.1 inches the screen is just stupidly sharp and it's, uh, well as I say, whether it's noticeable by the human eye is debatable, but you're, you, at least you know that you're getting an incredible market leading crisp and sharp display. So in conjunction with that QHD display which makes everything really nice and crisp and sharp, uh, we're still using Samsung's Super AMOLED display technology which in my opinion is one of the best uh, displays on any Android smartphone. So uh, very very impressive screen. Uh, it is obviously as we're used to with Samsung, it can be very very punchy. Now let me run through very quickly with you regarding the colors, uh, some of the display options that we can go to. If we go to screen mode in the settings, I've currently got this on AMOLED Cinema, that's my uh, preferred uh, screen mode, but it is by default on adaptive display, so you can flick through these and see a bit of a bit of a difference. You can see that basic is the most, the most muted, but actually I believe the most accurate and the most natural. So people who want a natural reproduction and want accurate colors, I would suggest basic. Uh, for me personally, I like a little bit of punch. I like my phone to pop just a little bit, so I stick it on AMOLED Cinema. Uh, but adaptive display for me just uh, goes a little overboard. For example, if I leave that on and then go to YouTube, you can see that uh, the reds at the top, although it's not coming out quite so much on the camera because the perhaps my ISO is a bit bit low uh, it's, it's really really red it, so it almost loses a bit of detail it looks like uh, it looks a bit fake so personally I prefer keeping it on the uh, cinema AMOLED cinema screen mode but obviously this, again this is a personal preference and it's nice that we get those options so the whites are beautiful the blacks are really dark and rich and inky and overall it's a really pleasurable screen to use and finally, with regard to the screen, it's uh, also incredibly bright thanks to its uh, offering of up to nearly 600 nits, uh, I believe. So uh, although I tend to leave this on auto brightness and about 75% uh, up on the uh, scale here for a, a decent brightness throughout, you can sort of whack that right up and uh, get a solid 600 nits. So it's nice and readable, readable and usable even in bright daylight. But it also goes to the other end. It becomes... Uh, very very dim so I think one or two nits so uh, you know if you're using this in a really dark uh, place or at night it be doesn't become too bright either so you know it's good on both ends of the brightness scale so it's just a fantastic display and it sort of builds on the quality that of the Note 4 which people associate with having one of the best displays of any uh, phone and also their uh, Galaxy Tab S series tablets which also um, are, are reported and uh, reputed to have incredibly good screens and from my own review of the S8.5, so 8.4, uh, I can confirm it does have a gorgeous screen. So this builds on that successful technology, as I say, uh, combines it with the QHD uh, resolution on this 5.1 inch phone. So it's bright, it's vivid, as, although it can be a bit more muted if you prefer a natural color 
more natural colour reproduction. And overall, it's an incredibly impressive display and something that I really enjoy watching and uh, watching content on and uh, just using generally. So enough about design, enough about screen sizes and resolutions, let's just get down to the nitty gritty. Let's just see how well it performs. Now, inside we have the Samsung Exynos 7420 processor, clocked at 2.1 gigahertz, accompanied by three gigabytes of RAM. Now, crucially, this RAM is DDR4, as opposed to DDR3 and pretty much every other uh, smartphone at the moment. So that means it's got faster transfer rates and uh, should mean that uh, just opening apps and multitasking generally is a bit quicker. And also the uh, Exynos 7 processor is an octa-core 64-bit processor, very similar in those uh, regards to the uh, Snapdragon 810, which uh, is in the HTC One M9 and is considered to be sort of one of the best uh, and, and uh, closest uh, competitor to the uh, Samsung Exynos CPU. So it's incredibly fast, it's very, very powerful. And uh, I have actually already done a speed test between this and, my, and the HTC One M9, and you can go and check out my video now if you want to see how those two compare directly. But I will show you just a couple of benchmarks I took uh, while I was doing those tests uh, on this. Now, it scored just over 61,000 in the Antutu benchmark, which is an incredibly high score. It's significantly faster than the Snapdragon 810, which, as I say, is its closest uh, competitor as a, uh, a chip for the processor and graphics. And although that could be partially down to the fact that this is a the Exynos 7 is a 14 nanometer chip, so it's built on a smaller uh, microarchitecture, which means it's more efficient. Although that probably has a bigger uh, benefit to battery life than overall power. But combine that with the DDR4 kind of RAM, uh, we're getting blistering performance, and uh, these scores are exceptional. I'll just demonstrate for you quickly, just opening a few apps, and also we'll jump into a few intensive games to show you that these benchmark results do translate into great real-world performance. So before we jump into a few apps, let me show you that uh, I'll close all the apps in the multitasking drawer. You can swipe them aside like that, or you can quickly press close all. So now we've got a, uh, a phone with nothing running in the background. So I can open uh, our BBC News, and it opens in a couple of seconds. Let's uh, try Spotify. Again, really nice and quick. Let's uh, try uh, Twitter. And again, if you want to have a look at my uh, M9 versus S6, speed test you'll see that uh, this is really really impressively fast and even just opening like your gallery or the camera is super fast now the speed obviously is a combination of uh, the hardware and also software improvements and we'll talk about that a bit later but one thing i will mention just because i think it is a speed uh, sort of um, benefit that if you double tap the home button no longer does the s voice come up instead it opens the camera so even if the screen is off you can just double tap this and within i'd say under two seconds perhaps you get the uh, camera app open so you can see if i close that now just how quickly it opens anyway but to think that you can just uh, be anywhere have it in your pocket and you know see something interesting see a cat falling over or something you can just double tap it and within a couple of seconds you're good to go. So that speed really does have an actual real world benefit, just a general UI smoothness. There's not a hint of stutter or lag, absolutely silky smooth and not a hint of lag. So that's very, very impressive. So let's uh, demonstrate this a little bit further. Let's jump into a couple of games. We can look at the loading times and also the frame rate uh, in Real Racing 3 here. Although, as I say, this video is limited to 25 FPS, uh, but this does go a bit higher. So, um, Let's see how well we, uh, we do here. You can see that's just loads so, so fast. This is one of those games that I, I do sometimes use to review because it looks so nice. And I can tell you just from personal experience that this is little... Cause I'm going through the menus, going through the loading screens a lot, lot faster than uh, I'm used to perhaps on other devices. So we can test the sound a little bit here. I'll play some music afterwards so we can go into more detail about the speakers. But it's uh, obviously just a single speaker. It's not stereo sound but it's fairly loud, decent punch to it. But anyway, we're here to uh, judge the performance. So if I jump right in here, let's change the camera. There we go. Now I do hate to keep mentioning uh, its competitors because this is obviously the S6 review, but uh, in the test where I used the HTC One M9 alongside it, I did notice, just uh, just from my own sort of personal experience, just from looking at it and using it, that 
the S6 did appear a bit smoother, at a higher frame rate almost than the M9 with the Snapdragon 810. So the uh, Exynos 7 processor, that three gigs of uh, really advanced RAM is really coming into its own here. Undeniably a super, super fast phone. And uh, let's de demonstrate that with one more app. Let's jump into Modern Combat 5. The loading screens are just incredibly fast. It's really, really impressive. I'm running out of uh, adjectives to uh, describe the speed here. It's probably get a bit annoying, me just saying amazing, incredible, uh, fantastic, but it, it genuinely is uh, market leading and uh, ahead of the rest. I've played this game a few times in a number of my reviews and they've all performed very, very well. Uh, but it's just to demonstrate that this is just as smooth and if not smoother uh, than uh, any other device on the market. So you can happily play any game, any app that you throw at it from the Google Play Store and be confident that you'll be running it in pretty much the best possible way that you can, you know, the highest frame rate. In fact, the beautiful screen, the uh, crisp QHD resolution, you're really getting an all-round fantastic package when you combine the power with the display quality and also then just the uh, how nice the phone is to use, to hold and to look at. Now moving on from talking about performance to touch with an Android, obviously to get such a smooth and fast phone requires both hardware and software optimizations. Now the impact of Samsung having their own Exynos processor inside as opposed to a third party one such as from Qualcomm means that I suspect that there's some behind the scenes optimization being that touch with and uh, the processor can sort of work hand in glove, there's uh, interruptibility between them. And so that could be offering some uh, hidden sort of uh, benefits and advantages in terms of smoothness and speed but all I can tell you is in terms of UI, in terms of touch with, you no longer have to worry. That I think was one of the biggest problems people had with uh, the Galaxy range and also just well, the Samsung range uh, to, to date is that the touch with has a reputation for being a bit sluggish, a bit laggy, a bit unresponsive but I can tell you absolutely that is gone. I would say that that's not entirely just for the S6. I have the S5 as well, and uh, the uh, upgrade to Android 5 Lollipop did make a big improvement to the speed and performance of that phone as well. So it's not exclusive, this uh, smoothness to the S6, but thanks to its uh, much more powerful hardware uh, and the, upgrade, uh, the uh, most recent touchways and Android 5.0.2, which is this running, this has absolutely no issues with lag or responsiveness. And I've shown you generally that apps load really fast in terms of raw performance, but also just the user experience. The user interface is flawlessly smooth. Everything closes and opens really nicely. And as I go back, as I say, we go back to that uh, little uh, camera opening uh, function there. And um, one of the things I have said in the past videos, I think with the Note 4, is that the S voice, Samsung's S voice, used to be tied to a double tap of the uh, home button. Now that was a bit of an issue because if it would often, you press it once to go back to the home screen, for example, like that, but it would wait, it would be a delay because it'd be listening for a second press if you were wanting to open the S voice. That's something that I always recommend disabling. Obviously uh, S voice is uh, hidden here and no longer is accessed by the home button, but instead it has been replaced by opening the camera, which A is more useful, but uh, B doesn't, you know, it's still technically listening for that second press, but it reacts instantly here anyway, despite the fact that it still has a double press to the camera, which is very useful. So that must be software or, and or hardware optimization is doing that. But what it means is no longer, you no longer have to go through developer options, reduce animations, turn off S voice, and all these lists of things that I would have recommended in the past. And even going as far as putting a third party launcher on, uh, to improve the speed. This stock is just incredibly fast and fluid and you don't have any issues with performance whatsoever. The button here opens your previous apps which can be, as I say, uh, deleted individually or fully. If you hold it down you get a side, you get a multitasking view which is something that we saw on the Note 4 and it's reasonably useful as only a select number of apps you can use on it. But for example I might want to have uh, Chrome on one side and perhaps uh, Google Maps on the other, and uh, you can see like it, it works pretty well, pretty nicely. And you can actually also edit how much space each app takes up. But it does come with, you know, a, what we're used to in terms of uh, gestures, or perhaps even you could call them gimmicks uh, that Samsung's famous for. For me, the only one I keep on is direct call. That means if it rings, you can, or if you have someone's contact or message open, you can put it up to your ear and uh, it, will, it will call that person. 
The other ones include uh, mute, which so you can turn the phone around and it will mute a call. Uh, palm swipe to capture, which uh, if you enable, you just do this. Hopefully. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, that... <laughs> These things never work for me on camera. Anyway, it's that roughly of that idea. It's supposed to take a screenshot, but I prefer just to uh, hold the power button and the home button and take a screenshot that way. Uh, smart alert, uh, you just get a, a vibration when you pick it up if you've got a notification. But for me, all those aren't particularly useful, but fortunately they're not... Um, uh, you know they're not in the way anymore and I think direct direct call is the only one I may actually use so you can just leave that it's no longer being bogged down by these motions and gestures that we sort of think that the uh, Samsung phones have been in the past but they're still there if you use them which is great now I mentioned before about that parallax effect background which is really nice we'll go on to the camera in a bit but let me show you uh, one, of the, one of the best pictures I took uh, which uh, I'm looking forward to showing you a bit later if I make this my background, if I did it, if I can remember how to, that's oh, right, set so this wallpaper, you can see that it's not just the standard uh, Samsung wallpapers that this applies to. You can get the parallax effect with any wallpaper. So you, it looks like the icons are right on top of the phone and the uh, picture is maybe a couple of inches beneath it. It's a, it's a nice effect, subtle, doesn't make you feel sick or anything, but... Um, it's, uh, it gives it just, as I say, added motion, added uh, depth to the whole experience. Now, there's a couple more interesting things about the UI and TouchWiz. Uh, if we scroll left, uh, well, I say if we scroll right, but go left from the home screen, we get a, uh, a, a flipboard sort of news feed. This is very similar to HTC's Blink feed, and uh, you can edit what sort of content comes up, you know, news, fashion, food, travel, for example. It's, I do like it, it's quite nice to see, but it's one of those things where if you it doesn't update automatically, so if you go over to it and you haven't used it for a, a little while, it'll have a bit of a, a jarring uh, judder and then an update as it then updates the new post. So it's the only thing that sort of takes away from the overall uh, completely smooth uh, sort of interface of the rest of the phone it could, because it's sort of updating and downloading the new content. So uh, whether you use it or not is, is up to you, but you can get rid of it. If you uh, pinch in to zoom in, this is where you, uh, to zoom out, you can access themes, which we'll talk about in just a second, screen grid, uh, add widgets and wallpapers, but it also allows you to untick this if you wish and you can get rid of it. So you can do a little checkbox there. So if I uncheck it and then go back, you can see uh, that screen is no longer there. Since we're talking about the uh, wallpaper and also how things look generally, you can see that currently the um, apps have their own sort of color coding. The messaging is orange, the phone is green, um, and the camera is, well, doesn't have one, it's black. But um, you can change it under what they're called, calling themes. Uh, if we go to themes and settings, you can see that the I'm using the default one, which has uh, that as a lock screen, that as a home screen, and shows you the colors and the layout and the fonts that uh, we have at the moment. So you can go to the store uh, and find more. There aren't a lot on there at the moment. No doubt this will increase as the um, phone's been out longer. Now, aside from the power, the screen, the design, all those other bits and pieces, one of the biggest upgrades, finally and thankfully, is that Samsung has improved the uh, fingerprint recognition. Uh, on the S5 and the Note 4, it was really, really bad. It was inconsistent and people just didn't want to use it because it probably only worked about 50% of the time and also required a swipe down with your finger or thumb. Fortunately, Samsung have fixed this, so if I jump into the uh, lock and security fingerprints, and I've already pre-registered a couple of my fingers, so hopefully this will work first time. If not, then, well, read into it what you will. But it's a simple case of pressing your finger down. Oh, no match. There we go, second time. Um, and then you can register a number of fingerprints. It's a lot easier in my experience. It's a lot more uh, consistent and works well and actually works well enough to use as a genuine everyday security method to open your phone. I would say it's still not quite at the level of Touch ID, but it's very, very close. So if I turn this off, I can then simply hold my thumb there like so and uh, unlock it like that. So it's much, much better and a vast improvement over the uh, S5 and Note 4 and so it's uh, really good to see that finally the fingerprint recognition is something that is actually a selling point now, not just a, uh, a bit of a gimmick that people can say, oh, oh, it's got fingerprint recognition, but you know, no one actually uses. Now you can use it, so that's really good. So I can sum up the camera for you in one word, incredible. It's one of the best cameras I've ever used on a smartphone, if not the best. And I think it gives the iPhone 6, which for me pretty much holds the current uh, 
standard, the current benchmark for smartphone uh, cameras, and gives it a great run for its money, and in many ways beats it. And uh, I'm looking forward to doing a camera comparison between this and the iPhone 6 uh, very soon. So on the back, we have a 16 megapixel optical image stabilized camera. This, thanks to the hardware and software optimizations and improvements, offers something called Live HDR. So if I jump into the app, I can show you that uh, we can have HDR either on, off, auto, or on. I tend to just leave it on auto because the camera probably knows best. And it takes a photo, actually if I leave it on to show you, it takes a photo with HDR instantly. There's absolutely no delay and it takes it's just as quick, uh, perceivably at least, as taking one without HDR. There's no processing or loading involved, which is great. So in addition to that, we've got the flash on this side, a uh, and it can record up to 1080p 60, also QHD, and also 4K. Now 4K can only be recorded for up to five minutes at a time, and if you go anything above 1080p at 30 FPS, you lose the video stabilization feature. I can show you now if we go back into the app and go to settings. If I change the video size, uh, I would recommend just keeping it on, uh, I apologize, if I keep recommend keeping it on just full HD, because it's, as you can see at the top here, if you uh, go into UHD, QHD, and QHD actually is the resolution of the phone, or full HD with 60 FPS, you lose the HDR, you lose the video stabilization, you lose the ability to add uh, effects and filters to it, and also the tracking uh, auto uh, focus. So you're losing a fair bit of the features, a fair bit of extra software by going up the resolutions, but it is there, and it's a nice feature to have, and it's also fairly typical in UHD to be limited to a, a five minute recording, but just for file size, and also because the device gets a little warm, but that's something that's fairly common with uh, phones at the moment, and uh, something quite similar to the Z3 from Sony. So you can see here that it's uh, going up to five minutes, but uh, that's fine. But for me personally, I would just keep it on the standard full HD 30 FPS. It's a natural, it's a good uh, video, and uh, I'll show you later some samples, but it's a really cracking camera. So what better way uh, of demonstrating how good the camera is than just going through a few photos and videos, and I'm afraid selfies. Uh, to show you just how good they are. Now interestingly, uh, the front camera is actually a 5 megapixel camera, which is pretty good uh, for a front camera. And interestingly, both the front and back have a f1.9 aperture. What that means is it lets in loads of extra light and uh, is a lot better than most phones for uh, low light photography. And it means it's less noisy, uh, you get better low light uh, images and videos. So it's interesting that both the back and the front are f1.9. It makes most sense on the front because people tend to do selfies perhaps in the evening with friends, but it, it really is uh, very impressive and means that you get a really nice bright photo from either camera in any lighting condition. So let's uh, start, I, I went up for a little bit of a walk yesterday, uh, and let's start with uh, just some standard photos. So this is a just a picture of a it's just a pretty standard picture of uh, an estate uh, here in England. It's a beautiful sunny day in, in April, which is uh, very peculiar for England, but um, I thought I'd take advantage of it and show you a few pictures. So before I jump into any particular sort of features or uh, aspects of the camera, it overall just takes a really, really solid picture. If I move on to the picture of this bush, for example, I promise these get more interesting as we go. You can see that just overall, the colors, the detail, the lighting, it's really natural, really nice. On the phone itself, it looks nice and vivid, looks nice and bright thanks to the AMOLED screen, but even once you take it off the uh, phone and view it perhaps on a more accurate uh, desktop display or laptop, the uh, detail and the vibrancy and the colors do transfer. So let's continue with the uh, still photography for a moment. Uh, one of the things that I really, really like about the camera is just how many um, modes there are and effects you can put on. Now, I prefer an auto mode. I prefer where I'm not really messing with the ISO and the, yeah, the macro and the focus, for example. But if you do want to do those things, there is an option uh, to go in, if you go into mode and click pro, you get to be able to set, as I say, the focus, the ISO, the uh, uh, other bits and pieces, and uh, also some uh, filters like so. Now, for me, the thing I like doing most is I love creating de depth of field photos. I think they're really powerful and really uh, can produce some good images. Now, this works just generally even in auto mode, but I went into pro mode a couple of times just to see what I could do with uh, perhaps adjusting the manual focus. You can see that the 
uh, plan and the gate is really, really in focus, really close to the camera, but it gives you a really nice depth of field behind it. And the best photo for this, which was actually taken on auto mode, I just simply auto selected the uh, plant in the sorry, the uh, blue belt at the front of the scene. You can see that if you zoom in on the blue belt, it's incredibly crisp. It's almost, I, I mean, I'm using a Canon 70D to film this, but uh, shots I've taken with the Canon is not dissimilar in just quite in sharpness and detail and clarity than uh, even th than this uh, S6 which I'm zooming in on the bluebell. It's really really impressive. And what's even nicer is then if you go past the focus point and look behind it, you get this gorgeous sort of depth of field blurred effect. So you can create overall a really nice image, really vibrant, really rich and detailed, but the sharpness is there, the detail is there when you zoom in, which is really, really impressive. So let me show you a couple of more pictures. I, I think it looked like a bit of an idiot filming some cows in a field. I think people were looking at me a bit funny, but uh, it looks really, really pleasant. The colors are nice. It's obviously really, this is a really well lit conditions, so um, that's in its favor, but overall very impressive. But let me give you a couple more examples that aren't just cows and plants. I uh, had a bit of a barbecue yesterday. You know, we're English. As soon as it becomes, you know, over 10 degrees, everyone puts the shorts on and puts a barbecue on. But you can. This is a sort of a good uh, example of just how the uh, camera works in di different lightings. This is sort of an evening setting, so the lighting is less intense and uh, less bright, obviously, than the full daylight. So uh, you'd expect the detail to suffer. You'd expect more noise. But no, you can zoom in and it's still incredibly crisp really nice the colors are punchy everything is natural and vivid so i took this uh at sort of dusk it was uh, getting pretty dark obviously once it gets completely dark you might want to use the flash but thanks to the hdr mode it still means that you get a pretty good pretty detailed and uh, nicely reproduced image if, uh, even in uh, low light and thanks to that f1.9 aperture there's not a lot of noise either uh, so while we're still on stills, let's jump into the front camera. This is me in my garden and you can see it's well lit, there's no noise, uh, detail is good and it's really well uh, produced and natural. Um, now there's a mode called uh, a, a wide selfie, let me show you how to access that if I go to the camera settings, turn it on myself and then go to mode, you can get a wide selfie and that means that once you take the photo you can angle the phone in both directions and get a wider image. So I did this earlier and you can see that this is the uh, standard selfie picture. This is how it looks, just a normal photo. But if you put the super wide selfie mode on, you can get a shot like that. So it's a bit fish eye but you do get a significant, uh, you do get significantly more um, content in your picture. So stills, excellent front and back. Let's look at videos. You can just see generally how well uh, and how smooth everything comes out. So similar to the pictures, it's detailed, it's bright, but it's natural. Nothing's overblown, nothing's overshadowed, and it all looks pretty good. Now, I, there's also settings for fast motion and slow motion. So let me show you those. So if we start with the slow motion, I can change it to a quarter or an eighth speed. And to be fair, this doesn't do slow motion as well as the iPhone 6 does. For me, that's still the king of slow-mo. But it is pretty good that you and it's sort of you can edit the clips in a very similar way if you have used an iPhone uh, with uh, editing as movies that way. But you can bring it down to a quarter speed or an eighth speed. But interestingly, it does record sound as you can hear. Whether that's a good thing or not is up to you because it's not particularly uh, helpful that. But uh, it's interesting nonetheless. So uh, let's put it to one eighth speed and see uh, what you think of that. So this is good lighting. Obviously, this is going to suffer. A fair bit if you're doing this in a dimly lit environment but it's impressive and it's better than uh, pretty much any other android phone i've used for slow motion and now as well as that it has fast motion so um, again we can increase the speed from 4 to 32 times let's just go all out and click 32 and see how it looks which is a bit ridiculous let's uh, let's try it again on uh, four sp on the, yes let's try eight speed that's a, a decent uh, decent speed to go for so it's pretty interesting. It could be a bit of a time lapse. Generally, the camera, as I say, I prefer to uh, film at uh, 1080p 30 because you get the uh, video stabilization and also the HDR um, feature for uh, for videos. So um, let me just show you a couple of clips I took. Uh, this is just walking through a field, and if you've watched any of my other reviews, you'll see that this is a 
uh, a common video uh, sample that I take. It's a nice environment. You get some, uh, you get to look at some uh, pleasant cows and trees, which is a benefit of living in rural England. But as you can see, the optical image stabilization does have a pretty good impact, a pretty good effect on the camera. So when I'm walking, you can usually pick up the steps quite noticeably, the vibrations, for example, but that deals with it quite well. But what's becoming clear is that the camera, just like the rest of the phone that we've looked at so far, is really, really advanced and really a step up from uh, the S5 and also the competition uh, at the moment. It's incredibly good, it really detailed, low noise, thanks to the uh, high megapixel counts and also the uh, aperture being what f1.9 is really bright and light and also it's uh, just pretty fast it's the focal uh, focal length focal, the shutter speed uh, I managed to catch this uh, bird in flight it's not you know it's not com completely in focus but it's still pretty impressive for a smartphone camera so as I'm sure you've seen from other reviews the battery life on the s6 is one of the areas it just doesn't do quite as well as the other as the other parts of it so that's not really to say it has a bad battery life, it's just that the rest of the phone is so great, it's so good that the battery being just above average is uh, perhaps a tad disappointing. Now the fact that it doesn't have a removable battery anymore means that this becomes a bit more of an issue than perhaps it would have done on the S5, but overall it has a solid battery life. There's a few mitigating features to make it not quite so bad. Uh, first of all we've got wireless charging and it uses both the Qi, uh, the Qi I think they call it, uh, the QI and also PMA wireless charging technology, so you can go into a Starbucks or McDonald's and charge it. So two types of char wireless charging technologies if you're into that. But I think more usefully is the fact that you can do a quick charge using the uh, charging port at the bottom. Now you're gonna need a fast charging plug as well, and one does come bundled with the phone, but you're gonna have to buy more if you want, obviously more. Uh, but it does make a bit of a difference. So I was actually wondering, you know, what is the difference between a fast charge and a normal charge? Now. For me, a fast charge will get this from 0 to 100% in about an hour and 20, in about 80 minutes. And impressively, also from about 0 to 30% in 15 minutes. So that's really, really impressive. It means you can get, have a good few hours of battery from it in only about you know 10 minutes of uh, charging. So what's the difference? Well, fast charging, I took a screenshot. With 5% battery uh, on the phone, it says it would take an hour and 17 until fully charged. And that is with fast charging. Let me see if I can uh, focus this for you. There we go, that's better. So you can see that it's uh, an hour and 17 on the fast charge, but on the normal charge, it's an hour and 50. So it's a fairly significant difference, um, but you know, it's not exactly slow on a normal charge, but you can see there that uh, it's cutting off a solid half an hour by using the fast charge. So that's pretty useful. Uh, and combined with the wireless charging, it's uh, not too bad at all. So finally, let's have a quick chat about the sound quality. Now, unfortunately, as well as the battery, the call quality, because um, I'll include that in the sound quality section, is a bit average. The uh, speaker at the top for your uh, for the earpiece isn't particularly clear. It's a bit dull. It's a bit. Uh, it's just not very good. Um, I would describe it as perfectly average, and it's one of those things where, in such a high-end phone, you know, it's cost 600 quid you expect that they get the cool quality right, but uh, it does suffer a bit. It's by far, it's not bad in, by any means, and uh, the, I've had many, made many calls with this, and people can hear me fine, I can hear them fine, it's just not that crisp or that clear. But in general sound quality, I'm just really glad that they've moved the speaker finally to the bottom from the, uh, the back. Now, it's still not quite the same as having dual stereo front speakers that we see on the Sony Z3, uh, the Z2, and also uh, the HTC One. Uh, M7, M8, M8, and M9 with their boom sound tech. So it's not quite at that level, obviously. This is a similar level to the iPhone, uh, A, because it's similarly placed, uh, and B, it's just similar uh, audio quality and um, general sound quality. So uh, let me should just play you a couple of tracks and uh, I'll put it up to the mic and see what you think of it. So what should we play? Let's put a little bit of, um, uh, let's put a little bit of Brian Adams on. So it's reasonably loud. It doesn't get quite as loud as uh, some of the devices, and it's um, it's all right. It's 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 better than it, the S5. It's better than the Note 4, but uh, I wouldn't say it's quite as punchy or as um, uh, accurate and vivid as the iPhone. 
and obviously it's not as loud or as uh, crisp as the HTC or Sony, but it's good and it's an improvement, so obviously that's a good thing. So sound quality overall is on, is on a sort of similar level as the battery life. It's average, perhaps even just above average, but it's not quite as great as the rest of the phone is. So uh, it sort of stands out as being a bit of a, a weaker feature, a weaker area of the device as a whole. Fortunately for you, this won't take long for me to sum up. This is one of the best phones I've ever used, and it's one the one to beat for me in 2015. The combination of an amazing camera, great screen with that QHD resolution and the Super AMOLED tech, an improved sound quality for the speaker on the bottom, super fast charging, wireless charging, the Exynos 7 processor, which makes everything blisteringly fast, and also the touch whiz improvements means we no longer have the Samsung lag that we associated with it in uh, years gone by. So it's a great all-round phone and I highly recommend it. Obviously the cost is one of the main issues with it. It is a very, very expensive phone, but it's also an amazing phone. So uh, I thoroughly enjoyed re reviewing and I really hope you've enjoyed watching it. For more, please check out techjump.com and I really do hope you subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with my upcoming uh, reviews of uh, the competitors, including the HTC One M9 to see how this goes against it. So uh, thanks for watching guys and hope hopefully see you again soon. Cheers.